Hey guys, welcome back. Today we're gonna be talking about the narcissist and therapy. We're gonna talk about why the narcissist suggests to go to therapy or they're willing to go to therapy and what the process will be like and what to expect. And let me tell you something, it's not what you think. But if you're new here, my name is Missy. I'm a life and relationship coach and on this channel we get to the root of the issue and we learn how to heal and deal. So if that's your thing, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. I would love for you to be a part of the fam. And if you already are a subscriber, I appreciate you so much. Let's jump into today's video. So this video not only applies to when you're in a relationship with a narcissist, but also having like narcissistic family members. So when you're in a relationship with a narcissist in the beginning, it's all flowers and sunshine. There's a lot of love bombing. It's too good to be true. And then eventually it will take a dip and things will start to become more negative. They'll gaslight you, they will criticize you, they'll make jokes and they'll take constant digs at you, and there'll be a lot of fighting. They'll try to make it seem like you're crazy and there's something wrong with you. Or like when you have when you have a narcissistic family member, it's not the same where you go through, like you first meet them and their love bombing stage is more, you're already in that trauma bond with a family member, especially if they're a parent. So there, there will be stages where they're nice and there'll be other other stages when they're really mean and it can be very confusing and it's this constant like up and down roller coaster and then if you've been in a relationship with a narcissist for a while it'll also be that up and down roller coaster so naturally when things go sour people either do one or two things they either leave or they reach out for help so one way people reach out for help is they'll go do research on the internet which is great because you could just type in any question you want and google will pop up with the answer so you may have done a lot of research on why are you having these issues with this person it may already be aware of their issues and so then you may search out for help through a therapist or even if you haven't done research on this person, still you may reach out for a therapist, couples counselor, family counseling. You're just seeking for a professional that can give you some insight how to deal with this. So it, it could either happen like that or if you start distancing yourself from the narcissist or you suggest to end things or you show that you're going to leave, then the narcissist may suggest that you go for outside help or they're going to suggest oh i'll go get help and they will especially suggest going for outside help going to therapy if you are the one who has mentioned it in the past and they've said no and the only reason they're doing this is because they feel you pull away they're terrified of abandonment they're terrified of losing that supply so they have to reel you back in and they know every little thing about you they know what makes you happy and they know what makes you tick so they're using it as a way to manipulate you to get what they want now if the narcissist agrees to go to counseling or suggest it you have to understand you're both going for two very different reasons. You are wanting to go because you want to find a problem to the solution. They're wanting to go because they want to point out that you're the problem and you need to be fixed. So if you're someone where you've done some research, you may be wanting to know the solution of how to deal with more of a narcissistic person. What are things that you can do or what are things that they can do? So that way you can have a happier, healthier dynamic. They're going because they really are so egotistical and they're so arrogant. They genuinely think that the therapist will see what's wrong with you and they're trying to get someone else on their side and they're using it as a way to manipulate and control you so you stay longer and you stay in that delusional reality. So it's much easier to manipulate and control you. That way you'll never leave. So what happens when you're in therapy? How does this transfer over? So when you're in therapy, understand the narcissist is very good at manipulation they know how to play their cards right so generally there's three scenarios that usually happen and we'll go through them one by one you're going at a time when you're very reactive and emotional you're sick and tired of this you're sick and tired of the mind games you don't know what to do and you're at your stress and your cortisol as an all-time high and you don't know how to play those same cards you don't know how to play that game like the narcissist does you don't know how to play that same manipulative game you're a human with feelings and so your fight or flight has kicked in and you are now in a time of survival so when you're in a survival state reasoning goes out the window and your emotions kick in and so when you're in the session you're so used to being gaslit and not being believed and being emotional that 
you will overly explain yourself. So you may overly share, you may go into detail and express all the negative things that your narcissistic partner or your narcissistic family member has been doing and you're overly explaining yourself because you're just like please someone believe me this is real this is happening and what the narcissist does is they sit back they let you talk yourself into a hole for a while now they've been provoking you to get a negative response and now you will react very negatively to any type of trigger. Now this serves the narcissist's purpose of making it seem like you're crazy and you're unstable. Now the, the narcissist will allow you to speak, say all of these things. And then when it's their time to talk, they will talk about how they just want things to work out and they want things to be better. But you keep reacting the way that you're reacting and see this is what they're talking about but they can't talk to someone that's behaving like that and they'll say like we both have things to work on but it's hard to work with someone when they behave like this so if you don't have those tools or you don't have an understanding of what it's like dealing with a narcissist naturally a person will snap especially if they're being taunted and they're made to question their reality so you will snap they're saying you're lying and you will snap so then you may react more emotionally maybe you'll cry and say please believe me and so that can cause you to go into that desperation mode and anger may come out or an outburst of crying will come out and again it fits that narrative because they're so calm cool and collected it fits that narrative that you're so emotional it's so hard to deal with you and they can sit back and say see look this is what i'm dealing with and this is all because of all the provoking they've done. And the reason why they're acting so calm, cool, collected is because they're using this session as a way to further gaslight you and manipulate you. They are using this session as a way to triangulate and get a professional, get the therapist on their side to further enforce that narrative that you're nuts. And it has nothing to do with them. And it can further reinforce that idea that it's okay to abuse you. This especially rings true if you're dealing with the covert narcissist. The covert narcissist will speak highly of you and make it seem like you're creating all of the problems. They are just the victim and they want a better relationship so badly no matter what it takes. Cue the sarcasm. Now, if the therapist is not trained in narcissism, which unfortunately there's not enough training, but if they're not trained, they're more likely to fall into the narcissist manipulation because they're so good at it. So they'll become manipulated and then they'll focus on you and working on you and your emotional problems and everything going on with you. It then becomes secondary abuse. This can further gaslight you to feel that you are crazy. Maybe you are this person that they're saying that you are. And you may have thoughts and feelings like, okay, if a, it must be especially true of a professional saying it, and so then you will feel like you have two people ganging up on you and you feel like you've lost hope and you may further feel trapped. So that's one scenario. There's a, sec a second scenario that may happen. This still is the narcissist manipulating, but they may manipulate in a different way. They may act like they are taking responsibility, but they'll do it in a sense where they're speaking past tense. So they'll say things like, yeah, I used to yell, and I'm sorry for that, that I did that in the past. Or they'll say, yeah, I've always been this person. It's who I am. Or if you have a narcissistic mom, they may say, I'm sorry I wasn't the mom that you needed me to be. And I have a theory of why I think the narcissist does this. I think it's because it's easier to disassociate and act like it's something that's happened in the past rather than acknowledging it's still going on. So uh, narcissists can be pretty aware of what they're doing, otherwise they wouldn't be so good at manipulating. Um, especially if you have a narcissist that gets very angry when they get called out for their manipulation, it's because they're trying to protect something, they're trying to protect um, their lives, they're trying to protect the delusional world they've created. So it's easier to disassociate and act like it's something that happened in the past, but they pretend that it's still not going on or they're still not affecting you in a negative way. Now, they are not only manipulating the therapist, but they're also manipulating you to make it seem like they have this self-reflection, but it's fake self-reflection. So they, they are making it seem like they're taking accountability and they want to change. So they're painting that pretty picture. So you may leave the therapist's office feeling good and they may take some of the suggestions that the therapist had suggested. 
So for instance, if you had mentioned that they yell a lot, they may stop yelling. And so then you have these thoughts of like, wow, it's working. We can have a happy family. We can have a healthy relationship. I can have my mom or my dad. So this may go on for a little while, maybe a few days, maybe a few weeks. So you'll probably be less distant. You let your guard down. You be vulnerable with them again. But then you will notice that things start changing a little bit. They may not be yelling, but they're being very condescending. They may not be physically hitting you, but they're giving you silent treatment. And this is because they're, they learned not how to do better. They learned how to hide it better. They learned another way to abuse you. They got caught and they realized like, oh, I can't do this because I got caught, but I have to find other sneaky ways to abuse this person. So when you let your guard down, they got you right where they want you. Now they can use those little sneaky manipulative tactics and they eventually will stop doing those suggestions that the therapist had suggested and they'll go back to their old ways of gaslighting you, abusing you, manipulating you, just in sneaker forms. And so they still will have that inconsistency, inconsistent sex, inconsistent affection. Sometimes they're the best thing in the world and sometimes they're the worst thing in the world. They're just learning how to put on different masks. And this is because the narcissist uses therapy as a way to learn how to manipulate better, how to be more sneaky. And this is because they don't have a real ability to self-reflect. I will say there's a very, very small portion of narcissistic people that know how to self-reflect. But overall, majority of them, they don't have the ability to self-reflect. And if you can't self-reflect, you can't change. You can't, how do you change without looking at yourself and being able to identify, oh, I have this problem or I have that problem. And most struggle with empathy. I think some I've mentioned before the term selective empathy. Some have selective empathy where they have empathy for things outside of themselves. So dogs, babies, maybe when something horrible happens, they'll have empathy. But in their relationships, when something that can affect them, they don't have any empathy for the other person. Or there's some narcissists that have absolutely no empathy. When something negative happens, they're just brutal. All in all, their key thing that they care about is not getting caught. They don't want to be called out. They are so shameful. They don't want people to find out who they are. But they still want to get what they want. They don't want people to say no to them. And they want you to maintain their supply, so they'll continue to do what they're doing, just in a sneakier way. So this can further gaslight you and confuse you because you're like, well, they did it once, maybe they'll do it again. Or you'll feel like, oh, maybe we just need to go to therapy more consistently, and then just they're learning more how to manipulate and control you. So that's the second scenario. Now the last and third scenario is that you get smart. You learn their ways, you don't react to them, you don't give them any type of emotional response, you gray rock them, you don't fall into their love bombing anymore. And then the narcissist can't read you or manipulate you anymore. You're not giving any type of reaction. They don't know what you like or what you don't like. They don't know how to push your buttons. So they'll do one or two things. They will either throw a tantrum and freak out and try to get a reaction out of you. They may smear your, ma your name. They may do a lot of tactics like triangulation. They're going into a narcissistic rage or they will then go and try to get their supply elsewhere and then they will leave or you will leave. And this could happen if you have a therapist that is aware of narcissism or if you realize how unhealthy the dynamic is and maybe you're coming to your own realizations and conclusions through this dynamic. So all in all, all three scenarios aren't the outcome that you originally went to a therapist for. You originally were going because you wanted some type of resolution to be able to deal with this person better. But going to therapy with a narcissist could further the manipulation or the abuse. Go to therapy on your own. There's nothing wrong with that. But if you do choose to go to therapy with a narcissist, because no one can tell you what to do, you're going to make your own decisions on your own, be aware of these things. Understand these are the most likely outcomes. 
So what's most important is that you want to protect yourself and not fall into these traps and understand these people, they just want to manipulate further. So what do you guys think? Leave it all in the comments below. And please don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and share with someone that you think may need it. Until next time, thanks for watching. Bye, guys. Something happened. Why is What the heck? Why are you like that? Oh, did you... Did you fall? Oh. Oh. You feel a little bit... But you're okay now. I just realized halfway through the video my nails weren't done. Sorry. I'm so cute and quirky. Oh my god. <laughs> Most people get their nails done at the salon. This is what I do. What is that? Now they're not only manipulating the narcissist. <laughs> now they're manipulating the narcissist. We're going to talk about why the therapist. And they may take some of the suggestions that the parent. The